What's up, guys? Welcome back to Almost Funks to 40K. We're here today to go out about the here today to go over the ATC layout too and how all the uh the ships are going to lay out on it. Um so feel free to go ahead and like subscribe, help get this content out to uh everybody. And with that, we'll go ahead and pull up the uh, map book layout one or sorry, layout two. This is what we have for layout two. So as you see, compared to the other layout one, the middle here is much more wide open. So you're going to have major shooting lane right down through the middle here. Um, then you got you know these X shooting lanes back down through here, which really you got a nice shot through across the whole board there down to that side. Oh, that's the main lane. Uh, walk over here to the other side. Give me the exact same thing. Right down through this alley, exact same shot. Uh, you got a little lane through here. Through here. So this seems much more open for shooting compared to layout one. So I'd say layout two will probably be if you have table choice. And you're the more shooty of the armies in the matchup. It will be most likely the match uh, table you want to pick, or one of the tables you want to pick. Much better than layout one. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the deployment for mission one and four because they're going to be the same. Then we'll go over the mission rules for those. So let me get that set that up, and I'll be right back. All right. So this is what layout two looks out with uh, the tipping point deployment. Um, so you're going to have the four red objectives. Basically, everything but the middle objective is going to most likely be able to be held from behind a wall. So while this is a good table with shooting lanes, there are good spots to hide for units trying to hold objectives without being seen. So that might balance that out a little bit. Uh, the only thing is I don't know if away games will... If away games will adjust the side of this to be blocking on this side, because the way it's set up to work on some of the other layouts, the piece in your home base ends up open from here. So if the enemy is able to push to here, they can get a shot down inside your terrain here. Uh, so just be aware of that. If they don't have extra pieces or they don't want to swap the ends on all the tables for this one layout, um, then on the tipping point missions, you will have the shot down into your home objective. Just something to be worried. Something to be knowledgeable about, just know about. So if you're able to block the enemy from getting pushing to this spot here, you can prevent that. But if you let them take this spot, they will have shots down into your home base. That is something to consider in your deployment and planning for this mission. Uh, this will be, if they do them in the order that they put them on the thing of the player pack, B-G-P-A-I-N, in that order, then the first mission will be Purge the Foe and Smoke and Mirrors on this layout. So Purge the Foe is kill a unit, turn one, you get four points, then from turn two on, kill a unit for four, kill more units for four. Hold objective for four, hold more objectives for four, and you get to score objectives to the bottom of turn five. Um, and then smoke and mirrors, which is the one that lets you put an extra unit into reserves after both you both armies have deployed. Uh, this can be up to five turn points, and it can be take you over the normal threshold of what is allowed to be in strategic reserve. So that's mission B, and then also mission uh, A, which I believe will be round four will be on this exact same layout and it is taken hold which is sold one objective for five up to 15 per round score at the bottom of five if you go second uh really the most one of the most generic missions there is and then they also add the mission will raise banners uh, you can have a battle line unit raise a banner on an objective to control um they only do it once per objective so an extra potential five there uh so these missions are pretty straightforward, nothing too complicated in them. 
Uh, this layout, I believe, will favor mobile shooty armies. So I think Tau could do well on here, uh, certain Advec builds. Um, so that's just something to consider if you are a shooting base, especially a fast shooting based army. Uh, this is probably one of the layouts you will want to get in your table selections. Uh, so if you're facing a combat army, there's really a lot of space for them to cover across no man's land through shooting lanes. So this may be something that helps you in those matchups. Uh, if you're a combat army and you're facing a shooting army, I would advise not taking this one. So far, layout one's better for this one. Uh, we'll go through the other layouts and we'll see which ones are best for everything. But right now, this one looks like one of the better ones for shooting. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up uh, missions two and five, which will be J and I. Uh, so let me get those set up. And I'll be right All right. So here's the setup for search and destroy, which will be most likely missions two and four. Sorry, uh, two and five for ATC, which is missions J and I. Uh, so mission J is linchpin. Then your command phase. Oh, so this is the one where you basically point your control and objectives. You get three for your home base, or three for the one in your deployment zone. That's what I call home base. And you get five for each objective in no man's land. But if you don't control your home objective, then the ones in no man's land are only worth three. Uh, well, each other objective, so even the one on your opponent's side. So if you control your home objectives, your home objective, the other four are worth five. If you don't control your home objective, the other four are only worth three. Uh, I don't see a cap on how many you can score per turn. So if you can potentially hold your own and the other four, you can get 23 in one round, uh, is what it looks like here. Uh, and this also has Raise the Banners, which was one of the mission special rooms we just went over in the other one. It's basically a your battle line can raise banners on objectives and get you a potential five extra CP, one per objective. You can't do it if you've already done it on an objective. Uh, so that'll be round two, mission J. And then round five, mission I, is going to be burden of trust and prepare positions. So burden of trust is the primary. Uh, this is where we get four VP for controlling an objective marker that is not within your deployment zone. And you can choose a unit to guard it uh, if the unit that's guarding it uh, lives through your opponent's turn, then at the end of your opponent's turn, you gain two be Yeah. End of each player's turn, yeah. So at the end of your opponent's turn, you'll gain two BP for your unit guarding it. Uh, it is not an action to guard it, from what I'm seeing here. So the unit that's guarding it is still free to shoot and do everything else. So that is nice. Uh, so that's pretty much it. You get points, regular points for holding objectives, just the one in your opponent's zone doesn't count. And you get two VP if you have a unit guarding an objective at the end of your opponent's turn, you still control it. And then the uh, mission special rule is prepared positions. This gives you the ability to do the go to ground the heroic intervention strat for zero CP on your battle line units, but you can't use it if you've already used that strat previously in the phase or round uh, phase. So that is that. You see the objectives here. You don't have all four blocked now. If it's set up according to the way everything's laid out, these two side objectives here are now going to be fully out in the open. Uh, you can maybe get some cover here. Uh, if, this, if these are skewed slightly on tables, there's a chance these could be just blocking where you could tow in from behind. Uh, but if it's set out exactly like the layout and they're using the exact same away game setup they've been using for all their tournaments, uh, these two objectives will be out in the open. Uh, and with these firing lines here, that's going to make primary a lot harder to score. It'll be a lot harder to guard these objectives, getting shot off them. So with that being said, the three objectives you can guard are going to be hard to keep units alive on. And then a uh, linchpin. We still have that same problem where they can push to this corner and shoot you off your linchpin objective. Where if you're a real shooty army, I would go for that. If you take them off and can keep yours, that really, really changes the uh, things, uh, the way things work. Uh, actually, this is 
backwards here. So that one should be like that. That one's like that. This is just according to the layout. They could always do that. Move these double-sided ones back here. According to the layout, they don't have it the way. Or they could just attach and make two double-sided ones. But if they move the double-sided one here, you're going to end up with a shot into here, which I guess isn't as bad. So they could potentially do this. And that changes that whole getting shot down into your home objective thing, uh, which would change which armies this benefits a little bit. So I'm not sure if they will do that and then leave this here with this opening. But according to the printout of GW, the building with two sides on it is here. Although this building in their printout, this side is missing and it's on that side. So I'm not sure if they'll leave it like this or fix that. That's something to pay attention to when you first get to the tables. Because if it's set up this way, uh, this definitely really, really favors your shooting lists. Um, so that is something to look at because it could be different at different tables. Uh, some of them might have enough to fix some of the tables, maybe not some of the lower tables. Uh, so that is something to definitely be aware of because I believe it changes the way you play linchpin especially. Because if you get if their arrows walk up and shoot you off your linchpin that easily, uh, that could really, really swing this game heavily in who's favored and how you play. All right, so that's it for missions two and five. We'll go ahead and set up missions three and six. Uh, so I'll be right back. All right, so here's the layout we're going to have for rounds three and six, missions P and N. It's a crucible of, crucible of battle. That is the uh, angle deployment. So you can see those deployment zones right down through there. Uh, on these, you got same thing with these two objectives. They haven't moved for any of the missions. And same with this one to so those work the same way they did in all of them. These two objectives here, depend, potentially on, depending on how exactly your piece of terrain is and set up, may or may not be able to be just towed in from here. It's very, very close. If they have it slid all the way down like this, you can't. If it slid up a little bit, if you have a different piece of terrain. Uh, so depending on how they set that up, you may or may not, you may or may not be able to hold these from just within there. Uh, that is something to pay attention to when you're picking your table. But I guess you won't have when you're getting ready to start your game, because it'll be hard to have these laid out before you pick your table. I guess you could get there and do some pre-measuring, but uh, knowing whether or not you can hold these from inside here or not will really affect certain games. Uh, so mission P, which will be round three, is Scorched Earth. Uh, this is with the one where you could potentially uh, burn objectives starting turn two. Uh, so for each objective you burn, you get five BP. Unless it's the one in your opponent's deployment zone, you get ten. Uh, and then that objective is removed. You cannot burn your own home field objective. And then for each objective you control regularly, you get five BP up to a max of ten. So you're going to have to burn some objectives to get your max 50 uh, primary in this mission. Um, if you don't think you're going to be able to burn objectives, your max is 40. This may or may not be a mission where you consider a secret mission, depending on how things are going, because that caps at 40 anyway. Uh, I wouldn't burn. Be careful about burning an objective too early if it's one you could potentially hold for a couple turns, because that could hurt you down the road. Um, but that's it. So, yeah, just... Burning objectives will be necessary to max your points in this mission. And then the mission special rule for this is inspired leadership. Uh, that's if your warlord is outside of your deployment zone and within range of and visible, or within nine inches of and visible to one of your units, they get plus one of battle shock tests. Um, and then mission N, round six, most likely the last round, will be the ritual. Um, so this one... They tweak slightly for how you can set up the. Why is my brain not working? Sorry, it's early for me. How you can set up the ritual objectives. So at the start of the round, these two actually disappear for the ritual. So when we were talking about whether or not you can just tow in, that will only matter for Scorched Earth. 
And then for the rest of the ritual, this is where you can raise objectives. They have to be one of your units can attempt to do the action to raise an objective. It has to be within 12 inches of another no man's land objective. So the first one raised will have to be within range of this one, within 12 of it. And then it has to be dropped within one inch of your unit and fully in no man's land. And we're saying fully in no man's land. We just are meaning this chip, not the whole big neoprene everybody uses to show control range. This is the actual objective size. This is the control range size. So you only need, so you could drop this right there. We'll make sure that's 12. No, as we right at 12. So you can find the angle to get it right at 12. And just in there, you could potentially still hold it from your deployment zone. But, and then from here, 12. And how is the wording? Is it within? Because you have the whole chip to fit. Set the objective anyway to the ones. Exactly 12. So I guess it would have to be the edge of your chip is going to have to be exactly 12. So you could put this like right here. And now you can control from it. So depending on who sets the objectives first or what areas they block off with the objective or other objectives being set up, really can affect how this goes. But once it comes to scoring, you can. Score five for each objective up to 15. I believe in most games, you'll probably end up with like two on each side for five. Maybe you could find a spot to squeeze an extra one or two and potentially get up to seven in the middle. But I find that's going to be very unlikely. Most of the time, you'll probably end up with four to five middle objectives. Uh, your home base objectives score no points for primary, but could still be useful for secondary. And the mission special rule is swift action. So battle line units that advance or fell back are still able to perform an action that turn, which means you can advance or fall back and raise this objective with battle line units. So that could or could not be a major factor. So uh, that's it for layout two. So I can, once again, I've probably said this hundred times in the video, but I think this will really favor shooting units or shooting armies. Uh, pay attention to whether or not they do or don't fix this wall situation right here for your home field piece of terrain because that really changes how you can play this matchup and on the certain layouts pay attention to whether or not you can just tow in those couple objectives because that will affect things as well so this one so that's it i'll have that's all i have really have to say about layout two and uh, I will get back to you guys with the other three layouts that you're doing for this one.